What's going on, guys? Tyler here with your coach's notes for June 14th, Tuesday. So today we got part A, B, and C. Part A, we have a E2 mom for five sets. We're going to be doing three ISO back squats in that two-minute window. So it's going to be three seconds down, two-second pause at parallel. Today, we really need to work on keeping that tension throughout those three seconds on that descent. In that pause, we need to make sure we're keeping tension and we're not rebounding out of the bottom after we hold it for two seconds. So make sure we're, we're teaching our classes how to stay tight and then we're squeezing, we're driving out of that position. We're not going to drop back into um, lower than parallel to get out of that. You'll see a lot of people try to get way heavier than they need to um, and they'll tend to bounce out of the hole and that kind of just defeats the whole purpose of this E2 mom. So we also had deadlifts the day before. So you can maybe say, hey, let's work on the skill part of this, even though people are going to see back squat and want to go nuts. So um, working on that, that two or three seconds down, two second pause, exploding out of that, that parallel position. So part A. Part B, we have kind of a typical CrossFit workout here. It's going to be three rounds for time. You're going to do a 400 meter run, 21 chest of our pull-ups, 50 meter goblet carry. I would say, you know, you can scale back the run if we need to. We can throw them on a machine if we need to. Pull-ups, we can, you know, do chest to bar. If they don't have that many, we can always lessen the reps a little. We can always change the variation to just a normal pull-up. We can do uh, maybe a burpee pull-up if they want to do maybe less reps of that. And then maybe some ring rows to work some absolute strength there. And then 50 meter goblet carry, you know, most, most of us have a loop by now for that, just making sure that we're keeping that nice body position, especially after coming off of a run where our heart rate gets maybe a little spiked and then pull-ups, we don't, we don't wanna get rounded shoulders or anything, make sure we're staying nice and upright. We're, we're dictating that kettlebell, we're not letting the kettlebell dictate our body position, so. And then after part B, we have a finisher today. It's gonna be three rounds um, through, it's gonna be 12 and 12 ISO dumbbell rows. We're trying to get heavy with those. And then we have some banded hip flexions where we're in that hollow body position on the ground. Bryce has a um, video of how to set that up, but we're just making sure that lower back's driven into the ground. We're staying in that nice hollow position. So um, time-wise today, you know, 10 minutes for part A, 12 minutes for part B. I would say 10 minutes for about part C. So 30 minutes, give or take a couple minutes, you know, their um, program. So we have quite a bit of time to warm up get them ready for back squats and pull-ups are going to be like our main things there. We can kind of work in some like running stuff with some high knees or butt kickers, but we need to make sure that we're getting them ready for back squats and pull-ups. Um, I would say today in a warm up it'd be really um, good if you want to maybe pull out some kettlebells. You can always work some overhead kettlebell stuff. You can work some goblet positions because we're going to be doing that in the workout. You can do some goblet squats at that tempo. Um, I also like using the kettlebells like a mobility where we're in that lunge. You can kind of use that kettlebell on top of our knee to drive it out over those toes, open up those ankles a little, help us get into better um, positions just in those squats. Um, so yeah, once you you know get that warm up, make sure we're ready for squats, pull ups. After we finish our back squats, you might have a little bit of time to kind of geek out with our pull ups. We can go over um, just a normal kip swing. For some of those, we can talk butterflies where we work that like J up and away, and then we kind of sneak through and we work at like this like oval kind of position rather than up into the bar and pushing away. Um, it'd be a good day to kind of geek out on that. And then the finisher today, it's going to be really easy. I feel like a lot of times when we have three parts, um, people, you know, mentally are ready for A and B and then C that gets to there and they just kind of check out. So once we get to C, let's try to make sure that our energy's up. Um, we talk about the importance here. I mean, we have some dumbbell rows where we're trying to get heavy that translates directly to pull-ups. We have some, you know, hollow body holds where we're working that hip flexion that also translates to body positions that we're going to be kind of maintaining in pull-ups and everything like that. So maybe if, you know, people didn't have the outcome that they wanted on B, you can kind of like say, hey, this is going to really help um, develop us as athletes and just better overall. Um, try not to, you know, just kind of like, hey, five minutes, here you go, finish the day out. I would I would say at a minimum, let's try to do the first round with the class. That'll at least let you know that they've done one round. And then um, if you set them free, you can either get a clock going where, you know, you, you're saying, all right, dumbbell rows. And then you set it up again and you're like, all right, now we're moving to banded um, hip flexions or whatever. Um, 
yeah, just try to have fun with it. You know, part A, we're working on, you know, parallel and out. Part B, make sure we're warmed up enough for those pull-ups, um, give them plenty of options there. And then part C, make sure we're not missing that. Um, try to do it with them, try to keep the energy high. If you guys got any questions, let me know.